Welcome down to the Malted Man Cave. I'm Keith. And I'm Dave. Tonight we're going to be doing a delicious, delicious sherry bomb from Glendronic. Just, Just for you. All right, so as I said, tonight we're going to be reviewing a sherry bomb from Glendronic just for you, Dave. Just. Everyone knows how much you love the sherry. So um, tonight, it's a little bit different, though. Obviously, we reviewed um, whiskeys that have been matured in Pedro Jimenez before. Jimenez. But I don't think we've ever done one that was, like, fully matured for 20 years, 21, 22, That's 23 awesome. years. Actually, the whole time, and we've had like the Glendronic 12, yeah. which used to be really good. The new one is still good quality for what it is, but it's almost too sickly sweet to me. It's um, always a shame when you have to put in it, it for what it is into this statement, especially something that usually has a lot of weight behind it. It used to be stinking right. incredible, but right. it was also like 16, 17 years old. And I understand, old. right, and demand. Yeah. The newer one is actually 12 years, and it's like, I don't think, I don't know if it's fully matured in Pedro Jimenez. Uh, but anyways, I was wondering, I was like, you know what, normally I typically like Oloroso or Amontillado, and I was like, I wonder what, like, a full 21, 22, 20 years of PX maturation, if it's amazing. So, oh. shout out to Travis Faircloth, Carolina Caviar on Instagram. Damn, nice. He gave me a couple links on the whiskey world um to a couple and I've, I've this is actually like my fifth bottle of i bought the 23 year old daddy um, I bought a 19 year old i bought two olorosos I, 19 year old olorosos and then i bought Just two of these look, so it looks like coffee and now look at that beautiful color it's incredible. So this is Glendronic single cast 1994 specifically selected and bottled for the whiskey world. Um, it comes in at 56% ABV. It's 20 years of age cast number 3199 bottle 245 out of 438 distilled on July 10th, 1994 and bottled on July 2015. So when this liquid was going into the uh, the cask, we were back in ninety four. No, we were were we ninety four? Man, that was like we were eleven. What, fifth grade. I was eleven years old. Yeah. Jeez. So this says this, we should, you know, obviously, you know, I, I, lo grade? I love tasting notes from fourth grade. The fifth producers, grade? dark chocolate and stewed barley notes, infused dried figs and sour plums, aged leather and cigar box spices add a tremendous depth and character. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. We'll decide for ourselves. Dear Slim. Mm. Is, uh... <clears throat> so, how about you? Really, what do you get on the nose? You're like, we lost so many subscribers already. You're like, this is supposed to be such a good, such a good, such a good whiskey. Oh, man. So hey, this is his first, we, we didn't get notes and we didn't drink this before. So this is going in without any, uh, going in without any previous experiences. So no previous experiences. What do you get? So the raisin is oh. amazing. It you is, actually like it? Normally you don't like raisin. So, so this raisin, so it's mm. not raisin, raisin wine vinegar. It doesn't mm. have, it doesn't have any of the sourness to it or the, if it is a, <clears throat> no, it's it's it, it it smells like a fresh. I guess raisins aren't fresh because they're just dried fruit. But ah oh man, it is so. The the red dark fruits are so potent in it. Mm. It's it's pretty strong. Um, and then along with it too is a <clears throat> very good. I'm I'm gonna say like meaty. It's like a. It's definitely got some girth. That's what I was gonna say. It's got it's got a it's got a feeling to mm. it. Chocolate covered raisinets. There you go. So it's mm. like got like a, a thick coating that you gotta work to get to that gooey inside. Yeah. Prunes. That all right, I'll give it this. I'll give the, the producer's notes. Um Yeah, what well, well, the well, distiller's well, notes. That that uh cigar box actually is pretty on point. Oh, dude, dude, uh tobacco and cigar box. Yeah. Uh, you know, dried oak, um toasted oak. So this is what it smells like to me. Coconuts. I have a humidor 
And uh, I didn't. <coughs> I hadn't opened that thing for a long time. And I opened it up for the first time the other day. Mm -hmm. And it's got like a, it's like a dried tobacco to me. It kind of reminded me of that. Just, but like you, just this aged. This reminds me of our, when we went through our, uh, our pipe phase. Yeah. At the wharf. The wharf. Remember that dude with the parrot? <laughs> there was a parrot in the store. I do remember that guy. Oh, getting some Romeo and Juliet. Some, some acids. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of Nesquik. Like a tin of Nesquik, like you're sticking your nose in. Yeah, yeah, you get a little bit yeah. of that earthiness, like I get with all Glendronics, like chocolate and earth mixed together, soil and chocolate mixed together, coconuts, like I said. Soil and chocolate. Some kind of just sugary confectionery note. Maybe a little bit of peanut butter, almost, or a, is that peanut butter? Maybe more almonds. Almond milk? Yeah, almond milk. Definitely almond milk. Oh man, that chocolate raisinette reminds me of the uh, raisins is so prominent. It's totally the uh, it's totally the butter from Texas Roadhouse. A little cinnamon. Yeah, a little cinnamon, a little butter. Yeah, I can um, do that with you. Yeah, a little brown sugar. Brown sugar for sure. Yeah. It it. Just reminds it really me of something. Is. It does something remind of me of that. Of just a, we just had Texas Red House the other night, and it does kind of, now that you say that. Yeah, like a little bit of a cinnamon to it. It's nice. Maybe yeah. even, is there slight cherry in there? Maybe the slightest hint of maraschino cherries way, 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 way back in the background. Oh, man, that's good. All right, what do you got on the palate? <clears throat> Hold on. So my son loves olives. Have you ever smelled a can of olives? Got a little bit of a maybe like truffle oil. Maybe, yeah, Truffles. Uh, you get that sometimes. Olive you, water. Sometimes you get that a little bit on a uh, Mortlax. Yeah. They're aged in sherry. You get a little truffle oil. Mm. It's kind of like a bitter. Yeah. yeah olive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I will say this while you're tasting. PX really does work and it's not as sickly sweet when you age it for 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years because it gets enough of that oak to me that mm. makes it balanced out. It is super sticky sweet like you would imagine with PX, but it's got enough of the oak and other things that it, it it's not as yeah. cloying as you might think. Once it again, once again, it's got like weight to it. It's got like a meaty, a girth to it. It's probably just that being aged that long. That... Even the slightest bit of peat. Now I'm talking minuscule levels of peat, but old school Glendronics when they were doing coal fired yeah. um, stills. Just and I do believe there was a little bit, bit of peat, that they, a little bit of PPM to their barley. Man, and it's just enough that it, it makes it even a little bit more complex. I get the, all the chocolate covered raisins, chocolate, you know, raisinettes. I get a little bit of the coconut, walnuts, peanut butter, mm. truffle oil or all over. A little weird meaty yeah. bitterness almost. Oak, vanilla, maybe slightest bit of maraschino cherries. To me, did you, say, did you say like black licorice or like a licorice? Yeah. It's got like a, did you say a bitter, a more yeah, bitter, black like a licorice. bitter black licorice taste to it. But and, it kinda, and that kind of mixes with the oak. Exactly. Bitter black licorice into and oak. Which and which balances out all oak. of the sweetness so well. Without it, it would just be sickly sweet. But it, it's enough of it that it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have a little bit, got a little, have, have a little of the sour to like the sweet. Um, yeah. What about the finish? A little bitter to enjoy the sweet. I forget the saying. Finish. No sweet without the sour? Sweet, sweet without the sour. I'm going to have to buy a bunch of these before people, not that we have tons of subscribers, but before the few They run out. They're going to get these before, because. Yeah. So, the finish to me, hmm, it's probably... 
it's not it's not medium to long um parts of it are long for me um definitely that that weight to it stays with it the whole time that umami whatever that and is that cinnamon buttery like from texas roadhouse yeah like cinnamon just coats it coats it it's like you've been eating some bread and butter and it does have a yeasty, a slight yeasty note to it too. Yeah, in a good way. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe a medium long for me finish. I totally um, agree. Yeah, but it's, and what's nice about it is, it doesn't have. Some of them have just like one note that stays a long time that stays, and this has, it just kind of carries through all the way through. I enjoyed it. Still enjoying it. Yep. Oak. Bitter black licorice, maybe even a little olive oil. Um, that chocolate raisinette and coconut note, which I really makes it for me. Yeah. And then a little nuttiness. Man. Yeah. Medium to long. I totally agree. It's not like super, super long, but it's not short at all. No. At all. Maybe a little bit of like, man, it reminds me of like. That earthiness is there too. Raisin bran. A little like, brand, a little brand in that. Like, or is it just the raisins tricking us? You no, know, right? Brand. But I, I could go there with you. Well, see, I was thinking, I was thinking, like almost like a, uh, almost like a. Uh, no, very uh, raisin brand. Yeah. Graham cracker, uh, like a graham cracker taste to it. That yeast, you, yes. you guys thinking? Graham cracker. Something's and in there on that on that finish. Like corn flakes. Yeah. 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 It's good. I don't know. Good stuff. Malton Man, Man Cave Mark, what are you going to give it? All right. So one dram, one score. Everyone knows the rules. So, man, I think the last sherry I had with you, I said this is my favorite sherry. This is, this is one of my favorite sherries. Um, and this is also... This is one of the better whiskeys I've had in a while. Yeah? Yeah. You I like really, it that much? I really like it. I think the sherry... I knew I'd finally win Dave over to the sherry box. Uh, so, but I think it's only because of how well-balanced it is. Um, yeah, for those of you who are afraid of PX whiskeys, because they can get cloyingly sweet, if you age it, it for long that. enough, it gets enough of the oak that it actually starts to really yeah. work and not be over cloying. Yeah. At least in my opinion. I'm sure some people still think it's too sickly sweet, but man, I got a sweet tooth already, but I love Coming it. from a bourbon guy, yeah, this is this is mm. this is not sweet. Um it is a good balance. It's a it's a well balanced meal. So what are you gonna give it? Out of a hundred. Out of a hundred, I'm gonna give it a ninety point five. Nice. I'm gonna go point five above you and say ninety one. All right. Out of 191 for me. The 0. 0.5 is because it's a sherry. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I bought the 23-year-old version of this on Whiskey World, and it's really, really good. This one's better. Mm. I know you you haven't had it to say, but this one is better. I could attest. It's better. The other one's more expensive. So save your money. The 23-year-old, it's still good. And it's worth having, but it, this one's better. Yeah, it's fantastic. Question, Question of the night. night? Jinx, yo, Miyoko. Um, we were thinking of a random question, mix it up a little bit, and we we're thinking, we we're thinking uh, favorite or, or it doesn't have to be favorite, more interesting. It can just be really anything that you want Memorable to talk about. Memorable or historical, yeah, whatever historical battle you want to talk about tonight. So we're each gonna pick a one, and we were actually planning on talking about this before it, so that we didn't pick the same one. Who cares? We can talk about the same, or we can talk about multiple ones. How about you? <clears throat> At first, I was going to say the Battle of Thermopylae. Okay, so so talk. The, okay, the so, so talk about that one while you're thinking about your favorite. Just like the idea that you know they yeah. funneled in funneled that the little name. corridor, and just they were so bad a that they were thousands. To, um, then we'll fight. But then I then I started thinking about. You know, the Brad Pitt movie of Troy oh, and just yeah. the whole. Oh, yeah. Everything that led up to that. The mythic, yeah. epic battles of, you know, what around that. And this woman that was just so beautiful that you had to go to war over it. Dude, 
There are no packs between lions and men. Hector! <laughs> That's such. I gotta watch that. You movie. sack of wine! <laughs> <laughs> That's the most random part of that movie. I'm like, oh, okay. Just, Everything about that movie. I think everybody good. just got Except COVID for... breath. I was like, yo, sack, you sack of wine. You sack of wine. <laughs> I remember like, okay, Brad. Wait, oh, you should have said no to that. Somebody, line. yeah, somebody, you somebody messed no. up. Yeah, somebody. That's like that's like not having ball with a ball. But the cra crazy yeah. thing is, that's probably actually accurate. Right, they probably right, would have right. talked about. That's probably like, why they but, left it in. Like, but, oh, we but, have to put some part of the Odyssey into it. Wait, is it Iliad? Iliad. Yeah. The Odyssey is where they go and fight the uh, the ogre. So I'll go with uh, I'll go with that. Okay. The battle. Trail. All right. All right. What about you? So I'm gonna. Uh, although, actually, is there any, any historical context to that? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's allegory and myth. I know. Yeah. Obviously, you know, Achilles was and, not dipped into, <laughs> and he wasn't immortal except for his Achilles tendon. I'm sure a battle happened. I'm pretty. Yeah, there was a battle. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. I'm sure it happened, and people just spruced it up. Yep. Yep. Um, so, the Battle of Bull Run. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> My family. I was thinking about Gettysburg. Yeah, the Revolutionary thinking, War. Yeah. Uh, Battle of Bull Run. My uh, the McVeighs man. We own. Uh, uh, we, your family? We Is that your mom's My son? yes. The the the, the Bulls and the McVeighs were fun fact together. I'm related to William the Conqueror, the Norman invasion, 1066. That's that's, that's pretty cool. That's now, pretty cool. At most people somewhere are related to kings and queens if you really trace it back. But yeah. my my uncle, maybe he's lying, but he showed the lineage, and it does look like we have some. You, you remember uh, uh, the Tudors? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. who was like the the kind of the slutty one that? Oh. That tr Anne Boleyn? Amb yeah, we're really, yeah, apparently we're related. Ooh. Mild or not Mildred, Ooh. but uh, Lillian. Ooh. My mom's mom. That's, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> sassy. Yeah. That's sassy you Remember mix. her? She was so mean. She was so mean. All right. Okay, no, I didn't say, my, I didn't say what my favorite one is. I'm going to say my favorite battle would have to be... Um, man, I... I loved the uh, so so I loved the Battle of Pearl Harbor, like learning about oh, it. Yeah. Um, I loved. I didn't love it, but it was like the the first time you're reading about some other country coming to our neck of the woods mm -hmm. and hurting us, and like the response to it. And then when we were kids, Pearl Harbor came out, and like yeah, it was it was. What was it? The you and a bro? The guy? What was that guy's name? Josh, Josh Hartnett. Hartnett. Yeah, no, I was thinking, what What was it? The 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor? Then? Probably around I'm there. I'm not sure. I forget. So anyways. Yeah. I'm 75th. So just the Battle of Pearl Harbor? Probably Battle of Pearl Harbor. Just favorite. most memorable? Uh, just most memorable, but just because, like, and I loved planes as a kid. I still love planes. And, uh... Like the the idea as a kid of like a guy just being like oh, with his plane like using it and like that mentality I just you just can't comprehend it like what you're gonna fly an airplane into another ship because the kamikazes yeah yeah it's crazy yeah that just that's that a commitment right that's there. that that like cult mentality mm -hmm. yeah I'm just so glad that our armed forces aren't like. We don't hear stories of like the, now there are guys that definitely risk themselves probably stu look sure stupidly uh in hindsight but it yeah bravery in in the moment but man <laughs> i'd be that i'd be that <laughs> japanese fellow that's like <laughs> just kidding <laughs> hello <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and remember, Scotch, Scotch is, is king, especially uh, when man. it's a sherry if bomb it, blend drum. If it's in twenty years in a in, in that cast, look at I'll, that. Look at that color. Look at that darkness. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna leave and turn the lights out.